arthritis. I just need my water. And I need to claim arthritis, girl. But I'm not claiming arthritis. Hilarious. But yes, that would be scary. Friend, it was stuck for like maybe a minute. And I had to pull it. And every time I pulled it, it said, I know you fucking lying. I said, oh, I know you lying. It said, I know you lying. I said, okay, I'm going to just leave it. <laughs> I, said, I said, okay, I'm going to leave it. So I was just there like this, like, okay, you got it, fool. And all of a sudden she said, I said, whoo, Jesus Christ. <laughs> had no boyfriend like with my hand like that no offense you know i don't want to make nobody feel no type of way because some people be born like that but that's just not on my rodeo i'm sorry that's low potassium magnesium okay so yeah i need to um i used to eat bananas a lot then i stopped and then i i drink a lot of water but i do more intake on beer than i do water so yeah, and I said, I said, well, mama, what is that? She said, that's arthritis or you just need some more water. And I said, that's what it is. Cause I drink a lot. I drink a lot, y'all. I drink a lot. That's why my stomach is like this. Like it, that's nothing. That's just the pants. Don't think it's me. Cause when I fix it, girl, it ain't motherfucking nothing. Don't do me, girl. But, um, yeah, I drink a lot. See, I want my stomach. Hold on. I want my, I don't know. I just drink a lot. Beer will dehydrate you. I know that, friend. That's why I said I drink a lot of beer more than water. Um, Drink one glass of water. Y'all, oh, yeah. See, that ain't gonna happen, girl. I gotta get a little drunk. So, I'm gonna try to get back on my water. Like, I used to drink a lot of water. And that's probably why, like, my bags look like this. My skin ain't as bright as it used to be. Because... I don't drink a lot of water. Oh, and y'all can stop um, calling them people now. They said y'all was going ham. They said y'all was saying crazy shit, like just crazy stuff. Y'all is so mean. But my car is good. It looks amazing. Oh, you love my eyebrows? Thank you. My car is good. It looks freaking amazing. Like it looks so, 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 so good. But I'm thinking about getting the Bronco, y'all. It's like, I, I have to. I'll send you a recipe. Okay, friend. Leave one near the bed. I, girl, I always do. Uh, friend, y'all, I just, y'all said water. <laughs> I know how to drink water. I used to drink water. I just don't drink it like I used to because I just been drinking. Somebody said, no, this is my car, not yours. Um, somebody said, um, I mean, I just haven't drank it like I used to. I used to drink water, boots, boots, boots. But, um, I stopped. And I just was drinking a lot of beer. Just a lot of beer. Um, the, the Land Rover, I don't care. I like my Bronco. I just call, yeah, don't call them no more. I'm good. Don't call them no more. We good. We're good. Um, they said, who is that behind you? That's Keisha. I mean, that's Jamal and this is Keisha. They my friends. And um, I cast spells on people who come to my house and get on my nerves. So if like I have a bad spirit type of man in here, those really do have like energies in them and they'll fuck you up. So think twice when you come to my house trying to act crazy because them spirits will carry back out on you. But uh, yeah, I'm such a fan. Oh, thank you, friend. I really appreciate that. Y'all, we had 7,000 people in here. Then after I told what was wrong with me, everybody left. They thought I was going to say some real shit and they left. It's okay. <laughs> Y'all really be in here for the shits when I say help. They say, oh, throw your thumb. Bye, bitch. We'll come back when you acting crazy. But, um, <laughs> I don't know. You do voodoo? Bitch, yeah. Now all y'all gonna be my friend forever. Um, and don't say that. Don't say what? This, the voodoo? Oh, it will. Anybody looking at this right now, you're gonna have a nightmare. Sleep paralysis. On you. Now y'all scared. I'm out. Gotta go. <laughs> Gotta go. Then I need to stop doing edibles. I gotta stop doing edibles too, child. Oh, y'all. My dog, I think he may have allergies. 
I think he may have allergies because his fur, like I've changed nothing. I've changed nothing at all. And um, his fur has gotten like a little dry. And um, like he's really dandruffy. I haven't changed any shampoo. I um, haven't changed any food or nothing. So I went on my Snapchat and I asked my Snapchat, I was like, what should I do if my dog has a lot of um, dandruff right now? They said, oh, pollen's getting ready to come around. Whoop, 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 yada, yada, yada. And um, they were like, so what you need to do now is give him some salmon oil on his food or don't feed him chicken right now and feed him salmon. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to like try to switch over to salmon and then, you know, put a little salmon oil on his food so he can do better. And they said if that don't work, then they said there's this shot they can give dogs and it'll really, um, it'll really help. Cause like when I, I changed nothing and his fur was so shiny and pretty. And now it's just like, oh, like when you pet him, it's just, it come out of nowhere. I'm like, oh, this is so gross. And like, I'm really big on like people skin and I'm big on dog skin. And like, it's just, oh, it looks so disgusting. Like snowflakes everywhere. And I've changed nothing. Just the fish treat is fine. I think I'm going to just change his food from chicken to salmon. He's getting older now. Yeah, he just turned one. Like, he just turned one. Oh, to the hell, I don't eat edibles. Yeah, I kill edibles, girl. Um, the body gets tired of the same food. That's all. Oh, uh-uh, like, not a blizzard, dog. Yes. Rock. I already, baby, I already do that. My dog eats, he eats cooked food. My dog eats chicken. Let me show you what he eat. Hold on. My dog eat good, baby. He eat this. This is chicken. And then it has like the, like, this is good. And then I crack an egg in here. And this is what I feed him. And so like, he's been having this since he was a puppy. And his skin, shiny, black, beautiful, looks good but it's like now all of a sudden like i've had him for like a year now it just hit a year marks the something he just turned a year but like out of nowhere out of nowhere his skin just got really 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 uh dry and i think um like like somebody said it's just because allergies is going to come around and um <clears throat> when i first got him it wasn't it wasn't, uh, you know, allergies at the time I got him. It was, it was, yeah. Y'all, I'm not changing my dog. You know what? Let me tell you. Let me say this slow. <laughs> say it slow. My dog shampoo. <laughs> my dog shampoo's good. Okay. His shampoo's good. It's the same shampoo we've been using since I got him. Skin has been shiny and black. Shampoo, good. Haven't changed the shampoo since he was a puppy because he's still a puppy. Okay? Still a puppy. He just turned one. Shampoo, good. <laughs> I don't do cheap shampoo. Shampoo, good. Same shampoo since he was a puppy. Fur been shiny since a puppy. Slobbering, good. Ain't changed the food since he was a puppy. <laughs> this food and one egg since he was a puppy. Good. <laughs> Shiny fur. Good. This same food and one egg since he was a puppy. Good. <laughs> Shiny fur. Good. Um, I ain't changed nothing, nothing. I ain't changed the food. I ain't changed the diet. I ain't changed the exercise. I ain't changed nothing. Good. I don't need, <laughs> I don't need to change the shampoo. I don't need to change the food. Everything is working. Perfectly fine. I think it's what the people are telling me. Now that he's, since I had him for a year, I didn't have him around allergy season with pollen. 
I didn't get him around that time. Now allergy season has came about. And I think, like they said, he just may have allergies. And so now I think his fur is reacting to the pollen that's about to come. And so I think I need to put fish oil, like they said, the salmon oil on his food. And they said, if that don't work, then you need to go take him to the vet because it may be bad and they may have to give him that shot. I don't need no new shampoo. <laughs> I, I don't need no new food. <laughs> this is the same shit I've been doing. And he's been shiny. He's been beautiful. And he's been good since I got him as a puppy. I think it's the allergies. I just think it's the allergies. That's it. I haven't tried different shit. Like, ooh, this week I want you to eat this. Next week I want you to eat this. Ooh, I'm tired of this shampoo. I want another shampoo. No. I keep the same shit. Like, I, I don't change shit around. I don't do none of that. No, I'm not doing no oatmeal bath. I ain't doing none of that. Um, mm-mm. Mm-mm. I just, I think it's the allergies. I'm sticking with that. I'm sticking with that. I'm sticking with that. So, I'm sticking with that. I'm sticking with that. Where is he? Right now, I, um, um, the pollen is hitting different this year. Yeah, um, do change if it's working. Yeah, I'm not changing nothing because it's working. Cody, Cody, I'm telling y'all, when it's pretty outside, my cat likes to go outside. People just making suggestions, no harm. Oh, you must be sensitive. It's okay. You, this your first time watching me? Welcome. <laughs> I'm a, let me tell you about myself. I'm a Gemini. Um, let me. I'm gonna introduce myself to you. What's your name? Hold on. Hey, nice to meet you. Color. Um, color V bad. Nice to meet you. My name is Zoe. I am a Gemini. May thirty first. Um, we we're like um, we're straightforward people. Okay. So if I tell you that nothing that I've been doing was wrong. Then I don't need no suggestions. <laughs> if I told you that everything has been the same and he was good, then out of nowhere something happened, then I would like your suggestions. <laughs> Cause Gemini's we're straight we're straightforward people. So like I could see if I said I was feeding him chicken, then next month I fed him salmon, then next month I fed him lamb meat, and then you know last week I was giving him an oatmeal bath, and then this week I'm giving him this new bubble bath for dogs. Then it's like okay, so just stick to oatmeal. I get it, but when it's the same thing I've been doing since the puppy, <laughs> it's like somebody says shit changes. No. Shit don't change. The weather changes. So I really believe, I really believe it's the allergies. I, I really do. Um, I think it's the allergies because like, I, this is not my first dog. I've had many dogs and I keep the same, like I figure out what works with that dog. And like the same shampoo I used on my Doberman probably is not going to work on him. I don't know. It's just, I went with the texture of his fur Woop, 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 yada, yada, yada. At the beginning, I had to figure out what was working with my dog. And certain things didn't work with my dog. And what some people don't understand, when you try to use... Some people will use, a, like, adult shampoo and all that stuff on puppies. And you can't do that because puppies' fur and skin is different than an adult fur. So, when, when you go to the store and y'all try to get, like, the puppy shampoo but with all that other stuff in it... It still can be a puppy shampoo, but as a puppy, they don't need that cologne and all them scents. So when I get my puppy, I just get regular puppy shampoo without all the extra crap because their fur and their skin's not ready for all of that. Like, I really look up stuff for dogs. Like, I really, I like, I'm not just that type of owner who just gets shit and you start experimenting. I really like look up stuff. Um, so... Don't answer. I work at a vet clinic. He has a good one. <laughs> Y'all gonna hate me. Adult fur. No, I'm for real. Like, just like with puppy food, you can't give a dog grown folks food because 
It's just different. Like, I don't know. He gonna be good, y'all. He good. Let me just, let me just hush. Thank you for all your suggestions and your opinions. I take it in. I love y'all so much. I really appreciate it. Thank y'all. <laughs> but no, um, um, Gemini's, we're just really, we're really like straight to the point. Like, if I was confused, I would have been like, I need suggestions. But I just said, like, do y'all think it's the allergy? So we were just talking about allergies and not food. And y'all went on food and like simple. I think that's probably why I'm single. No, you don't. No, you don't what? No, you don't what? No, I, just with Gemini, we just, you know, I don't know. You have your car? No. How much do you charge for promo? In my Instagram bio. Um, adult, adult fur. Um, Zo said help, but not really. No, the help was for my thumb. And y'all helped me. Y'all said water. Y'all said bananas. See, that's when I needed help. Well, I didn't know. Um, appreciate the suggestions. No, I didn't ask for it. My suggestions and help was for my thumb. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was for my thumb. Because I didn't know. Um, but yeah, the help was for my thumb. If you're new, my thumb had locked up. And I was so freaking scared. I was like, what's going on with my thumb? And they told me I need to drink more water and eat bananas. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to down a lot of water. And I'm going to go buy me some bananas. So, yeah. Thank y'all for that. Because a bitch was scared. A bitch was scared. Um, looking at it, probably like, so you so mean. No, I'm just blunt, girl. I still love you though. I love you for him. I love you for him. When you rather have somebody in your like, um all that hitchhiking you been <laughs> Okay Um How you been feeling since your baptism? Blessed. Not just a banana. No, they said bananas and water and stuff like that and your potassium and your magnesium. I saw all that. So yeah, I'm a um yeah, I've been doing it for you. I've been rotating. You ain't seen me, girl. I'm not here rubbing it, girl. Um, hey, Lacey J. Uh, I'm just saying, so we could run down. No, we're good, girl. What happened to your car? A whole lot, a whole lot. Of. Um, what is the app you looked at in the location? Oh, Live 360. I think that's what it's called. No, my toes don't lock up, bitch. No, ma'am. If they do, bitch, I'm old, old then, girl. I love you, Zo. Been here since then. Thank you, bitch. Gemini's friendly people. We have good spirits, and that is so true. Um, you killing me with them little sips of water, right? Um, no, if I went alive, I'd be killing that water. Like I'd be killing it. But you know, some people be saying like, "You're drinking too fast," and then like when I drunk the bottle, that person's like, "Though you know, you can feel your lungs up and die." Jesus Christ, relax. Relax. My goodness. Um, them locks looking good, friend. Thank you, friend. My knee been locking up. Ooh, you need to run. <laughs> you need to run, girl. Uh, I love you. I love you too. I'm now I'm just talking y'all. I really want to stand this long. I was just, or at least supposed to just ask y'all about my thumb and get a look at my baby. Hey baby daddy. I really was supposed to ask y'all about my thumb and um, get off. People so extra. Yes, girl. And you work on the computer a lot. Carpetano. So I'm going to have to start wearing that little glove thing. How you feel about the gas? I'm the type of person, I don't, like, I don't complain about, like, I may complain on a video to make it funny, because I know that's what everybody is, like, thinking. But really, I'm the type of person, I don't complain, child. Like, why complain? That complaining ain't finna change the gas. They gonna do what the fuck they wanna do. So I don't complain. I'm like, child, you needed to get around, so fuck you complaining for. <laughs> Okay, so I really don't complain. I'd be like, bitch, it's $7. Okay, guess you got to pay for it. What I mean, what else you going to do? Unless you just ride the bus. So, oh, see, I just popped my um thumb again. I need to stop. But, I mean, 
I don't know. It is what it is. I mean, sometimes complaining can work, but right now, complaining ain't going to change that game. It's like you're just stressing yourself out for no reason. And it's better things to stress out about. You know what I'm saying? Like, really stressing? You shouldn't even stress anyway, because if something's going to happen, it's going to happen. You can't change it. If somebody's in the hospital, don't stress, because, I mean, they're there. You can't change it. Then you're going to end up being in there because you're stressing. If you got a flat tire, don't stress about it, bitch. It's flat. What you going to do now? Just fix it and keep it moving. Well, I ain't got the money to fix it. Well, honey, ride on that donut until you can fix it, okay? Hello. It ain't going to change shit. You can't make the money go faster. If your boyfriend cheated on you, your girlfriend left you, uh, fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. Stressing about it is going to do what? Nothing. But have you over there stressed the fuck out for no reason. Let it fucking go. I know it sounds easier said than done, but once you get to that point in your life, it's like when you get older. When you get older, a lot of things don't bother you like it used to. Now, when I was like 17, 18, shit used to really get to me. And I think this comes when you get older and when you start to mature. It's just like everything becomes fuck it. Okay? It's like fuck it. <laughs> um, hello, I'm calling because you have a payment that you have... It, you gonna send it? You gonna send it to collections? Fuck it. <laughs> okay. At this point, fuck it. I told you I don't have it right now. Okay. I don't give a damn if you call me twenty times. I still don't have it. Okay. Well, it's in collections. Fuck it. <laughs> when I get it, you will get it. You will know when I had it. But right now, I don't have it. And you calling me ain't gonna make me get it. No faster. Okay. So. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. That word would get you through a lot of stuff. I know a lot of y'all don't cuss. Screw it. Forget it. I don't give a darn about it. Let it go. Like, I'm serious. Just that'll help you a lot in life. When you get a ticket from the cop, it's a ticket. Okay. Fuck it. <laughs> give it to me. Just give it to me. You know, and I've, I've learned that when I was already ready to get a ticket, I learned that they be giving me warnings. They be like, here you go. It's a warning. Because I already put in my mind, I'm going to get it. Fuck it. <laughs> so now it's like you change that energy and it's just like, I don't know. Fuck it. Fuck it. And watch how you live a whole lot better saying screw stuff. Like, screw it. Now, don't say it all the time. Because some, some stuff you do need to pay. Okay? Some stuff you do need to pay. Like, you can't just say, screw your rent. <laughs> okay? Then you're going to be on the street. You can't say, screw your rent. You can't say, screw your light bills. Because, you know, that stuff, you need. Are you going to be sitting in the dark? <laughs> Are you going to be outside? There's certain things you say, screw it to. Okay? Don't take that the wrong way. Um, But even if you don't have your rent... <laughs> Screw it. <laughs> Screw it. <laughs> and then you have to fit. Now that's when you got to figure out, okay, what am I going to do? Now, now it's up to you. If you're going to, if you're going to say, you know what? Screw it. Now it's like, screw it. But what am I going to do? <laughs> do I have somewhere to go? Am I going to go in a hotel? I ain't got no money for the, um, the um the storage. So now you got to figure out what I'm gonna do. But don't. But you can't stress on that because you're gonna be like, you know what? I said screw that. But now I gotta find somewhere to go. And if nobody take you in, then girl, you gotta just say screw it and make it do what it do. Either you fucking for some change, or you gonna sleep up under the bridge for a little minute. And all you can say after that is, fuck it. <laughs> I'm here. Fuck it. <laughs> so. Don't be screwed, okay? What's the next thing? I'm, I'm serious. At the end of the day, whatever decision you make, it's still going to be screwed. I did that decision. What's next? And you got to just keep it moving, girl. But when you start dwelling on shit and start getting stressed, <laughs> but yeah, that's how it was in my car. I was just like, you know, everybody was like, Zoe. I think I self-talked myself up to being mad with my car. I self-talked myself because I wasn't really mad. I think I got mad because I didn't really care that the car was gone so long. 
Because like I was like, bitch, I got it. I mean, I got an Uber. You know what I'm saying? I got to eat. So I have to start. Using. I got mad when I felt like I was getting lied to. It wasn't even the fact the car was gone for two months. I got mad when I felt like I was getting the runaround. Like if I'm not lying to you or I'm a loyal person to you and then you break our loyalty and you lying to me. That is what made me mad. When I felt like my time and stuff that I was going through in life was not appreciated. Like you didn't, you weren't appreciating that or you wasn't taking in consideration of me not having a car, me having to go on Ubers, me having to Uber Eats. And I felt like you didn't care. The principle. Yes, that's what made me mad. I didn't really care that the car was gone. I didn't care because I needed it fixed. I know I can't fix it. So it need to get fixed. Somebody said, but two months, I'm that type of person. Fuck it. If it has to be gone that long, fuck it. But just communicate with me. Tell me, Zo, we're busy. Zo, we ain't got the shit right now. Zo, these motherfuckers done called out. I'm sorry. Just talk to me. Let me know what's going on. That's all. But if I, you ain't talking to me, I can't do that. Yeah, just give me clear information and talk, just talk to me. That's all I need. Just talk to me. Because I'm spending my money. You know what I'm saying? I'm spending my money. I don't care if it's insurance. <laughs> Hell, that's my money too. I'm spending my insurance money. I'm spending my personal money. It's like, that's my money. Just let me know what's going on. <laughs> mm. Um... It most definitely was a wake-up call. What was, Shayla? What's going on, girl? What happened to you? What happened to you? It was a wake-up call. What happened to you, friend? Someone else could have fixed it up. No, what I learned was this. So, you know, it's communication. And now me talking to them, I learned stuff that goes on in the shops. So, this is what they had taught me. I'm just spitting slobbering. This is what I learned that goes on in the shops. So, you have... People who can really work on cars and then people who went to vocational schools who really don't know how to work on cars. So let's say I'm working at Ford, right? And um, I'm working at Ford and you have mechanics who come to be like, oh, I know how to work on cars. You, 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 you gotta, gotta, gotta. And then you're like, okay, but what all do you know how to do? And they be like, oh, I can do this, but they really can't do everything. So you really can't hire them. But then when you find that one worker who's like really fucking good. Excuse me. Y'all got to stop cussing so much. When you find that one worker who's really, really, really good. It's like they know they're good. And you can't fire them because a lot of people really don't know how to work on cars. So it's like that one worker can say, hey, I'm not coming in to work today. So all those cars are just sitting there because that person don't want to come into work. But because he's so good, you can't fire him because there's only one out of a hundred who can actually work on the cars and be good. So it's like you have some who know how to do just this and that, but it's probably two who can really work on cars. And they kind of take advantage of you because they know you're not going to fire them because ain't nobody really know how to work on a fucking car. So that's kind of what was going on too, but they didn't really want to say that. But I learned that today through communication. So just say that. Say we really had to work on the car. <laughs> I mean, but that's any that's any shop, not just that one. But it's just said that you know. I don't know. That's why when they say, "Don't ever." That's why they say don't ever down nobody with what job they do. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah, you might be an actor. But guess what, actor? When your car fuck up, when your car screw up, you don't know how to fix it. So we need to be grateful for everybody in every position that they're doing in life. I don't know how to work on no car. So your calling in life was for you to be a mechanic. So I'm grateful for you, mechanic, sir. I don't give a damn... If you don't make millions of dollars, 
But baby, you know how to fix that car. And some of, some people, you never know who car you might work on that might say, hey, you know, the more you learn how to work on cars, you might one day build your own car. You know, so it's like, don't don't stop there being a mechanic. Start learning how can I build a car? I don't know. Um, he's a May Gemini, but act like a June Gemini. Child, let me tell y'all something. I feel like no matter what, if you that fine, y'all are all the same. Um, you should get your nose pierced. My nostrils are too wide. No, ma'am. Mm -mm. My nostrils are too wide. And I hate when people had that little booger thing sticking out. Oh, I do not like those. That's why I said I can't date nobody. How much you said? They still was in the wrong, need to step up their professionalism. You're right, friend, but like I said, it, it, it really just all boiled down to communication. That's all it was. Call your insurance and get a rental. Um, I, I'm doing everything out of my pocket, friend. Um, but uh 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 uh, uh, uh um, where were we at? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I was just, oh the nose ring. I don't like that little booger thing, and that that's gross. So that's why I don't really fuck with people who be having them. Um, how was your day? It was really 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 good. I don't like people who have the no the little booger thing that come out their nose. I don't like that. The mechanic is probably cute. We back to saying fuck it. <laughs> May Gemini's versus June. They're all the same. And, um, maybe because I'm May 31st, so I'm right there with y'all June ones anyway. But I feel like no matter what sign you are, the only time your sign I feel will differ is if, like, you're at the beginning or you at the end. So, like, if you're at the beginning, I feel like you're going to have the good traits of the Gemini, if you're at the beginning of Gemini, you're gonna have the good traits of us, and then if you at the end of the other sign, you're picking up their bad traits. So it's like a mixture. But if you're a real Gemini in the middle, you a Gemini. But I am May 31st. So yeah. <laughs> It ain't the same, so girl. Okay, that's your opinion. That's your opinion, girl. I mean, that's your opinion. Oh, you said who are they compatible with? Um, like I'm a you a who? <sighs> Y'all, I can't see. I think I'm gonna get my eyes did. I'm the first day of Gemini's May twenty second. I'm June twenty eighth of February. Any plans for your birthday, friend? I have no clue. I really don't. I really don't. Look at my mouth. I got both crybaby and anger issues. Hello? Gemini's, we do cry. But, like, we don't, we don't like people to... We don't, we don't really like... We don't really like doing that like, um, Zoe, will you ever bleach your eyebrows? No. We don't really like doing that public crying shit. Like, if it happened, you catch us, but we gonna tighten the fuck up. Like, I don't even wanna cry, bitch. Fuck that shit. Yeah. Love you, Zoe. Love you too, friend. Hey, Zoe. Hey, boo. I'm a Leo, and we sweet as ever. <laughs> sure. Sure. You're... So sweet, Leo. Extremely sweet. Perfect. Um, what's I finna say? Cause I'm ready to go. Um, I think that's it. I think we're kind of done here. <laughs> what about Kanye? Oh yes, he's a Gemini for sure. And people don't get him. Like people, people don't get him, and it makes me so mad. Uh, that people don't get him. And what I was trying to say on my YouTube, or on my little um, podcast about him, people don't get him. Kanye has been Kanye since day one. 
And it's sad that people can't see that he really hasn't changed at all. He's still himself. Um, we're very vocal. We're very, very vocal people. And when we believe in something, we get very aggressive. And um, no, don't, oh, we get very aggressive when we really believe in something. Like, and my mom, I always tell my mama that when I know something is right and I know that I'm getting done wrong, I get very stern. Like, it's like, like, it's like, okay, calm down, calm down, because nobody's going to listen to you because you're so angry. And that's why Gemini's have to learn to just breathe. We, like, we will, we will get so passionate about something, and it will come off like you're just angry. And we're not really angry. We're just like, why the fuck don't you get it? Like, how when she says, oh, they're just giving you it, suggestions. And I'm like, I don't need the suggestions because I just told you what is working. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's working. I've changed nothing. So if I've changed nothing, then how the fuck can something mess up? That's just how we are. Like, it's just like, what the fuck in your face is what's in your face. You know what I'm saying? That's why when he made that video, um, why do people say, um, when people say, who do he think he is? And if I told you I'm a God, then that's who the fuck I think I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, why are you asking me who the fuck you think you are? Nigga, I told you I'm a God. And that is so true. Like, I hate when people like ask, they say there's no such thing as a dumb question. Yes, there are. There are dumb questions out there. So anyway, um, I think when, like me and my brother were saying, I think when Kanye's mama passed away, he lost his like groundness, his foundation. And nobody can understand what it's like to lose a parent unless you've lost one. So when he lost his mama, he lost that security blanket, that, that, that foundation, you know what I'm saying? So then I guess all he felt he had left was the Kardashians and their family. And I'm not saying they're bad people, but I don't. <sighs> certain people aren't rooted in, I'm not going to say them, just certain people aren't rooted in God. Okay. They're not rooted in God. They're not rooted in love. They don't have goals and morals. Like some people have goals, but your goals can be money. It could be fame. It could be this. But some people have goals on, I want to get money so I can help this person or I can help this country or I can do this. And Kanye has always been that person. So then when he did that thing, if y'all follow me, he was always good. Nobody was talking about him. Nobody. Kanye was that man. And then when his mama passed and he did that stuff with Taylor Swift, that is when everything about Kanye changed. He was always arrogant because that's just a Gemini. We're arrogant. We're arrogant people. We're strong. We're um, independent. That's us. That is us. And when we feel like somebody we fuck with is getting fucked over, excuse my language, when we feel like somebody we dealing with is getting screwed over or you're not giving them the acknowledgement, we're going to step up for our person. And we don't care where it's at, who it is, we're going to talk our shit for our person. And so when he did that with Taylor Swift and he got on that stage and he said, this should, oh, I'm spitting. This should have been for Beyonce. Child. That's when everything went crazy. It went, that Kanye's crazy. Kanye's this. He's going through that. Then his mama died. So it's like, a, it's a lot. So he's battling with the stuff he's seen in the industry that we haven't seen and talked about. Then he's battling with his spirituality because, you know, when you get caught up in all that shit, it's just a lot. So he's trying to speak and then he's not speaking. And it's just, it's a lot. It's just a lot. It's a, and when you really just sit, so the, the media, you guys, the media is a really, it's a really toxic place. And he wasn't lying about Beyonce, but the fact that he did that to that poor little girl and her moment, it looked really bad. 
And it, it did. It looked bad. It looked selfish. It was inconsiderate of her moment because everybody deserves a moment. D despite if she needed it, if, despite if she worked for it or not, that was her moment. You know what I'm saying? That was her moment. Granted, if they were cheating, everybody cheat everywhere with votes, with politicians, with everything. If they cheated, oh well. We know what the fuck going on. We know who really deserved it. But Gemini's, we just, we talk up. We talk up. And he just was this night. Man, you know what? Fuck this shit. But anyway, um, the media is a toxic place, you guys. It is so, 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 so bad. And they can, that's why it's called program television. They can program you to make you think anything they want to. They can ruin somebody's image in the blink of an eye. Just like, they, they can just ruin it. They can ruin it. And Kanye really has done nothing bad. But they have everybody thinking that he is just this cuckoo, crazy person who has lost his mind and he just needs help and psychiatric help. But he's not. He's still the same person. Very headstrong. Very dominant. Very outspoken. It's him. But now he's trying to battle with trying to make people see that I'm not crazy. He's always been different. He's always been edgy. He's always pushed it to the limit. But because now that they program people to think he's crazy, he's not. Y'all, he's not crazy. The man's not crazy. And if you just sit down and listen to him talk, it's how he talks. Like, Kanye has always talked in, like, riddles and rhymes. And you have to really figure out what the hell he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? And you just got to really sit down. He's not going to just give it to you straightforward. You have to really... He's on a different wavelength than everybody else. You got to, like, really listen to him. And people are like, no, Zo, he's... And I, if you're getting mad at me, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. But, um... This is just my opinion, and you can have your opinion, and we can agree to disagree, and we can still be friends. Because you're gonna, I'm gonna like stuff that you don't like, and you're gonna like stuff that I don't like, and it's just, it is what it is. You might smoke cigarettes, great. I don't. I think it's gross, but you know, I'm not gonna hate you for it. So just because I support somebody and like somebody, as long as you're not like a killer and doing dumb shit, you can't. Why you hate me for liking this person? So anyway, on to the Kim Kardashian thing. I feel the only reason. The um the only reason that he has he's bringing everything to the internet because some people are like no zo he's he's this is abuse that he's doing to this girl I think he really does like her you know how like you can like somebody but oh excuse me but then you know the person's not good for you but then on top of that you just don't want to be that statistic type of person where it's like man. Black men don't ever be there for their family or boop, 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 boop. So it's like sometimes we as people will be like, you know what? I'm willing to just go through this so I won't be this. And I feel like he's not really happy there and he does love her, but he really don't want to be there. But he don't want to be a black daddy who's not in their kid's life. If you get what I'm saying, because even if you sometimes if you listen to people's interviews, they, you, they'll tell you who they really are. And when they asked him that question, what's the best thing about being a family? I mean, what's the best thing about um, being in a marriage or something? He said the children. He didn't say, oh, my family are, you know, Kim and the kids. He said my children because he was being honest. It's my children because mentally he already knew I'm not. Never mind, y'all. You just got to, I'm very observant and you got to just watch people. I'm a people watcher and I'm not, I'm observant, but he do love that woman. He does, but he's just, I don't know. So back to putting everything, back to putting everything online. I think the reason he's putting everything online is because secretly, I think Kim wasn't telling him. Where um they always blame him. I really think Kim wasn't telling him where the uh birthdays were. And I think she was being malicious behind the scenes. I'm not saying this is true. I think she was being malicious behind the scenes. And she didn't think he was going to be so vocal in the press. 
And the reason I feel he was putting everything online. So if anything happened as far as like, you know, lawyers coming out and saying, oh, Kanye did this or um, Kanye was doing that. He kept y'all in tune with everything. So when all this stuff blew out, he, he could say, I told y'all this happened on this day. I told you this happened on that day. I told you I couldn't go to the birthday on this day. I, I done told y'all everything. So they can't come out and say no fucking lie about me. This happened this day. Here go the text message here. Here go this here. And that's why when Kim texted him, she said, why do you always got to put our business online? This is going to end up hurting our child too. No, baby, you just want it to be private. So then when shit come out, if he say, she say, your word against my word. Nah, I want them to know what the fuck is going on and how the fuck this shit being handled. And that's what I feel he was doing that. Did he want to do that? No, but I think he was just covering his ass. Um, somebody said playing the victim as always. No, I feel he was covering his ass because I'm telling you, people can really manipulate people and make y'all think that they're so and they're so like an angel and perfect when they're really not an angel and perfect. But because he's the one showing everything. It's making him look like he's the crazy, out of control, overly possessed husband who just can't let his family go and she don't want to be with him. I don't think it was that. I just don't. I think he really cared about his children and he just wanted his children. Fuck the, fuck the wife and everything else. He just really wanted his children. That's what I really believe. I don't know. Y'all can, you can think what you think. And I think what I think. And that's something I would have did. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to cover my ass because I'm telling you, the media can make or break you. It really can. And I will cover my ass too. Just like with the Chris Brown situation. Um, though, remember he did Amber like this too. I don't know. He acts different with women he loved. Um, with the Amber situation, that's my boo. I don't know if she here watching me because she follow me. But um, y'all just never know, child. Amber, my I love her, but Amber ain't no. She ain't no easy rodeo either. I don't believe nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. So um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just. I don't know. But do I, I, I don't know. But like I said, I don't think he's crazy. As far as like, sometimes like, do I think he do some stuff overboard? Yes. He goes a little overboard, but, um, I don't think, I don't think he's a hundred percent right and wrong. And I don't think she's a hundred percent right and wrong. I think they're both whatever, whatever was going on. But do I think the whole point of the conversation was, do we think he's crazy? No, I don't think he's crazy. But I do think that he really just wants his family. I don't think he cares about her. But when somebody else tried to get with her, I think he did get jealous. But I don't think he really cares too much about her like that. I don't know. But it is what it is. I think he cares more so about his children, to be honest. But I do think he still has some type of love for her or whatever it is for her. Whatever. But as far as like being together, I don't think they need to be together. No, they don't need to be together. They don't need to be together, period. They don't. Do not. I think that, I think that ship has sailed. <laughs> that ship is gone. Um, now the Chris Brown situation, um, the Chris Brown, I'm just glad he had those receipts. And like I was telling my friend today, I think with that with that type of situation, I think the people who lie, somebody somebody said Kanye's controlling. I think he was doing. We're going. Can we go, Chris Brown? Um, he's harassing her though. I don't. Y'all, have you ever heard like tit for tat? That's why I say everybody's not perfect. Um, 
Tag and Kim ain't finna make me shut up, girl. We on two different tax brackets. She is not finna come in here, nor is Kanye. They don't give a fuck what I'm saying. That's why I told y'all have that fuck it attitude. They're probably like, who is though? Girl, he's on YouTube. Fuck it. So you can tag them all you want to. I'm still going to say what the fuck I'm going to say. And then when they meet me and they don't like shit about me, they can say what the fuck they can say. And I'm going to say, fuck it. <laughs> I don't know you and you don't know me. Fuck it. <laughs> Do you think tagging is going to make me shut up? No. You, there's going to, bitch, if our lives are public, we're going to all say what we want to say about somebody whose life is public. Doesn't mean we're right or wrong. At the end of the day, I don't know shit about them. I'm just saying what I feel. And I don't feel she's wrong. I don't feel he's wrong. I don't feel he's crazy. And I said I feel like they both should not be together. And that's how I feel. If they want to be together, that's on them. But I don't feel they should be together because I feel like that relationship is toxic. Um, you basically just contradicted yourself. How, friend? Please come tell me because I'm going to make you feel crazy. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, now you don't want to pick up. I just want to know how to contradict myself. Just, you ain't got to show your face. Just hold your camera to the ceiling and tell me how I contradicted myself. Hold your camera to the ceiling. Because maybe I was talking fat. Oh, you, you want to decline it. I just want to know how I contradicted myself. Hold your... Just hold the camera to the ceiling. Hold your camera to the... Okay, so how did I contradict myself? Because basically you just said Kanye wants to prove to us that he's not the person he wants to be, then turn around and say... Then turn around and say, oh, well, they don't give a fuck about me, so you can post them in my group because they don't give a fuck about me. Yes. They don't... You, that's not a kind of, it's like they don't he's just when I say he wants to prove that who he is that's not to make you care about him it's just like I'm talking about like to his family members I feel basically so like he doesn't care what I say he doesn't care what I'm saying on my live right correct correct he doesn't care what I'm saying but what I'm saying is when he's trying to show people he just wants to show people look this is what's going on. Not that he can't, well, it kind of sounds like it's contradicting, but not, do I think he genuinely cares? No. But it's just showing, look, this is not me, I'm not crazy. Does that make sense? No? I mean, it makes sense to a point, but at the same time, it's just like... It's kind of, okay, it's kind of, okay, I'm, let me see how I can make it make sense. It's kind of like, how can I make it, how can I make it make sense? It's kind of like, let's say, Let's say I um let's say I, I'm out here and I'm flirting with a lot of niggas, right? Like I'm just flirting, I'm being crazy, and people are saying, Zo, you a hoe, you a hoe, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't care if you think I'm a hoe, but I just want you to know, like, bitch, I ain't a hoe, but I don't give a fuck what you think. But it's just like I'm gonna be like, bitch, I'm not a hoe because I wear it. I don't know how to make it make sense. But I no, I mean, no, I, I I I understand what you're Yeah, like it's like I'm trying to it's just like you don't you it's like you don't care but you don't want people to have the wrong perception of you if you get what i'm saying so like he don't give but a fuck about same... if i'm on this live saying oh kanye crazy as fuck he's stupid but he kind of wants you to understand like i'm really not crazy but even though if you think that but here's what i'm gonna show you just let you know but i'm not crazy does that make sense it makes sense honestly but <laughs> what, I'm, what, I, what i was trying to say is that I feel as though when you said the whole point of um, him not him wanting to show the proof that this is what's going on, and then in my mind I'm thinking, why does he need to show us the proof if he has the proof on his phone? Because, and the only reason is because y'all, we, me myself, we're consumers. You get what I'm saying? We're gonna we're we're gonna buy your music. We are the reason you're rich. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So. That is the only reason because he don't care what we think. It's kind of, it sounds bad to say that. Like, you don't care what people think about you, period. Right. But if these people are still your consumers, these are the people while you're rich, you want to still let them know, you guys, I'm not crazy. Woo, 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 yada, yada, yada. But at the end of the day, at home, you don't care. But if you still keep that I don't care attitude, you can lose so much. You get it? 
That's, That's like me being mm -hmm. famous, and I know that um, I you know I, I make money, woo, 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 but then all of a sudden I'm like, man, fuck this shit. I don't give a fuck if these people like me or not. But if y'all don't buy my stuff, then you know how the fuck I make my money. This thing has says I have one minute and forty eight minutes, um, one minute and forty seconds remaining. It's hard to explain. It's just, yeah, it's basically like protecting your brand. It's like I don't care. But I know I need if I still want to make my money, I need to let these people know I'm really not crazy. But I yep, gotta let them know. I, I, at the same time, I think there's ways to go about it. Like the way he's doing it is just it's it's more like harassment. It's not. It's, it's not, coming off like that. Yes. It's coming off like that. But I think I I feel like it was smart because. They, they can, upset at me, man. People can lie and change up a lot of shit. You said hang up on me. Huh? No, I'm, no you're, I mean, you're good. You're making me... I like when people have to make you yeah. explain what you mean. Like, I love that. Because when people can't stand on what they mean, they don't even know what they're talking about. But, right. um, no, I, I love the way that he's doing it. Be, I feel like sometimes it is a little bit too harsh. But I love the way he's doing it because um, it's like... If we knew nothing, if we knew that she wouldn't let him go to the birthday party, or we didn't know this, or we didn't know that, she can all of a sudden come out of nowhere and say, oh, Kanye's doing this. And then if he didn't have all that proof to show us, he'd be like, see, motherfucker crazy. But, but I mean, he still would showing, have it on his phone. He? he still would have those messages on his phone, regardless if he told us. But at, the, the point is, he wanted y'all to know, because you can always, the technology now, child, you can make up anything quick. But he was just keeping, I feel he was keeping everybody in the loop to show this is what's going on. And then that is what made him be able to get to the birthday party or to get here or to do this because he was telling. Um, hold on. It's about to cut off. It says 13, 12 seconds. But um, I don't know. I appreciate I mean, you. I appreciate, has their I, own I appreciate taking the time to, to really have this, you know, conversation with me. But <laughs> You thought I was going to be mean, didn't you? Get, I get what he's saying. I get what a lot of y'all are saying. When y'all are saying, um, I get it. I get what y'all are saying when y'all are like, it feels like he's trying to be controlling. I get that. But you got to put yourself. I just try to put myself in some people's situations. Like even with me, there's situations where I've been in and people like when you don't speak up right away, people will do stuff to change a narrative. And you got to like, I don't know. People will, y'all don't understand how how conniving and evil people are. So you try to like, you try to nip that shit in the bud quick. You try to be like, cause I mean, people do try to make, just like a lot of these, just like a lot of these daddies out here. Some of these daddies really aren't bad. Like a lot of these little daddies, these, these daddies, some of them don't be bad, but the woman will rip. Cause in this world, everybody, um, uh, I get what you're saying. No one cares about one person's opinion, but we care about the person influencing others with their lives like a wildfire. Yes. Um, so he's trying to fix that before everybody starts influencing you with their life. Thank you. I'm not spitting. That's perfect. Like, I'm so horrible with speaking, but I didn't know what's in my head. You just perfect. He didn't, he don't care about Nobody's opinion. Like, we don't care about nobody's opinion, but we don't want the lies to outweigh who we really are. So you fix it. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Perfect. Thank you, girl. But, um, um, um I just, yeah, I'm not a good public speaker. <laughs> not a good public speaker. Um, but I'm glad people can pick what I'm saying. Um, but a lot of these dads, I feel like a lot of these dads don't be bad. But it's just men don't know how. I'm not saying all men, but a lot of men don't know how to really communicate their feelings. So when a woman gets mad, because the world is already, you know, going to take the woman's side because she's a mother. She birthed that child. And, you know, women are so sensitive and boom, 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 yada, yada, yada. So if she says, oh, he's a badass dad, fuck him, da, da, da. But... Sometimes he really could be doing all that he can do, but you will make that man seem like he's just a piece of shit and nothing because he ain't doing what you want him to do. And so therefore now you're just tearing him down and tearing him down and then they'll be like, fuck it, I don't give a fuck. And then he looks like the bad dad, but he's really not the bad dad. He's just tired of just the bullshit. And if they just start saying, no, look, 
She did this here. She did that there. She did this here. This is why I'm not doing that. And so if you start doing all that, she gonna be like, well, fuck, he got me in the corner. I really got, you know, so if you start knocking all the shit she gonna say out the way, it's like, nah, bitch, look, she did this here. This is what she texted me. She said, fuck me. Don't come pick up the fucking child, you stupid piece of shit. And I didn't go pick him up because she told me don't do it. She called me a piece of shit. Hell no, nah, I'm not going to go over there. You know what I'm saying? And if you start showing all that shit, like she said this here, she did that here. She said, I don't give a fuck. You ain't going to see your fucking child because you ain't doing that. If you show all of that, then it's like now you got her in the corner and instead of like, instead of just trying to hide it and just say, man, this is what she said. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Now people just looking at you ain't trying to do shit. It's like, well, nigga, what you doing? Well, she said, don't do it. Well, why? Fuck what she said. Go get your child. But it's like, you just, I feel that's, it's kind of like, that's what I feel kind of going on with Kanye. He's just throwing it all out there. So it can't be no misunderstanding, no misconstrued shit. Woo, woo, woo. Did that help? <laughs> I don't know. No, because I don't feel all dads are bad that who aren't in the child life. I feel sometimes these women can be, these women can be a handful. And they know that having that baby is the upper hand. They know this. They know this. Taking away a man's child, especially when he really want to be there. You can really hurt a man when you do that. You can hurt a man. Like you can hurt them, especially when they want to be in their child life. You can really, really, really hurt him. Like, it'll drive them crazy, too. Like, when they really want to be in their child life, some men don't give a fuck. But a lot of men really do, low-key. They really do care. They really do care. And these women will take advantage of that. And they'll hold that over their head. And then that's what makes the man say, well, fuck it. I don't fuck it. Like, a lot of... Because a lot of people don't really want to argue. Like, they don't... Like, it's easier to just say, fuck it. <laughs> there we go. It's easier to say, screw it sometimes then to argue with somebody and somebody said they, they don't care. No, a lot of men do. A lot of men do, but it's just, you don't, you don't be one to deal with all that. People don't understand when you have a baby and you bring a baby into a toxic relationship, that's just going to bring more drama. Um, and it's not the baby fault. It's y'all fault. Y'all should have been prepared. And so sometimes people think because we've been together for six months or a year, Oh, we can have a baby. I love you. Like my mama always told me, now I ain't saying my mama right. I'm not saying she right. But um, she says she feels kids. Hey, hey, stop. I don't know what you mean. Um, she feels that babies, yes, I can't stand when people use their kids. Right. Um, she feels babies should be planned. And that's just how I feel too. Um, Y'all don't got to agree to disagree. <clears throat> But I really feel that um, babies should be planned out. Like, um, are we financially stable? Do we have somewhere to stay? If I lost my job, could you still take care of us and the baby? If you lost your job, could I still take care of us and the baby until you find something? Um, are we willing to deal with arguments? Woo -woo -woo, da -da 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 -da. You know, just a lot. Like, if I was to pass away, would the baby be okay? Would you be stressed out? Can you deal with... um? Just a lot of stuff. Just it, it, It's a lot that comes with a baby. It's a lot. And if both of y'all aren't mentally prepared and mentally ready and financially ready and, and just emotionally ready and all of that, then bringing that baby is just going to bring more problems. It's just, and it's not the baby's fault, but it's just because y'all thought that was going to make a cute family. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And a lot of people just be thinking... Oh, I'm 23. I need a child. Oh, I'm 24. I need a child. I'm, honey, are you ready for a child? <laughs> are you ready? A child is not a puppy. It's not a dog. People out here fucking raw are not ready to, <laughs> right. I don't know. Well, two of mine were playing and the one that wasn't is my heartbeat and I love him the same. No, 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 no. Because you've already had two. So you, I'm talking about your first one. I mean, I ain't saying, once you've had like a child or two, you know what you can and can't do. That's what I mean. Like, I feel like that very, all kids, like, you say he's your heartbeat. Uh, still, all kids should be playing. My opinion. Because even when you get the second one, are we ready for this second one? 
I mean, you already know now what comes with a child. But then when you get that second one, that third one, now are we ready to take on three? You get what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Are we ready to take on four? Like, it's always, you have to mentally prepare yourself because now stuff's going to go up. Time is going to change. Like, once you had that first one, it's like, okay, now they grew up. They three and six. Are we ready to go back to that I have to be at home all the time. I'm ready to be this. It's just always be ready because things are changing. Prices are changing. Life is changing. So it's always asking yourself, am I ready? So even though that child wasn't planned, already mentally, you know what it's like to take care of a child because you said it's your third one. So you already know what it's like, but it's just now, now that it came up, it's like you got to ask yourself, are we ready? Are we ready? Even though it wasn't planned, but now, you know, you're, you ask yourself, are you ready? You just got to you gotta be ready. <laughs> you gotta be ready. Don't have kids in your 20s. Yeah, I feel like in your 20s is still young. That's just my opinion. I feel like that's still young. Because a man ain't grown at 23. I'm sorry. I feel like a, a man ain't grown at 23. And I feel like that's his prime. So, ladies, when a man having sex with you around 23, 24... Telling you he want children before, before I feel like if a man's telling you he want kids before twenty six, good luck, sis. <laughs> so let's talk locking up a woman that lies. Yeah, I'm gonna get there. I'm sorry, we keep going back to um, what's called. But I feel like if a man, but I feel like if a man, if a man is twenty four telling you he want a child, I still don't think he's ready. That's just my opinion. Or it depends on how was he raised and how is he as a man. Because some people are mature at, you know, 24. But in 20 and 30, girl, he is in the 30. Are you crazy too? Yeah, 30 are crazy. Yeah, they are. But I feel like once you hit 30, you need to, it's time for you to calm down, sir. <laughs> it's, time, it's time for you to calm down, sir. But between 20 and 30, them men are, them men are, through the roof. <laughs> they are through the roof between 20 and 30. They through the roof, girl. And if you opening up your legs and having a baby for one of them, you better be prepared for everything. Where my water? These teenage parents, it's just, you know, that's how the world is now. I mean, I can't knock nobody. Because, hell, I'm, nigga, I date men and can't even have a child with our sex. So I can't tell you what you can and can't do because you probably like, well, so fuck you, nigga, you gay. The Bible says you can't do this and so you're going to go to hell. So I can't tell you what to do, but I'm just trying to help you to keep you from going through headaches. And then just being a single parent. Like, I'm not knocking single parent homes. I'm not knocking it at all whatsoever. I'm not knocking it. But... I just really love, even if it's the same sex, I just love two parent homes. Even if it's two girls, two guys, a woman and a girl, I just love same parent homes. I really, I, I, I love two parent homes. I just do. That's what I, that's what I grew up with. I'm not saying mom was right. Cause you know, it ain't, but I just love it. It's nothing like having like if a mother and a father figure, let me say that now because, um, you know, you got different lifestyles now, but it's nothing like having a mother and a father figure. Even if you have like two girls, one is feminine and one is masculine, or even if they're both feminine. Um, I feel like somebody needs to have that dominant energy if you're raising like a, let me stop because people going to say, you. let me never mind. Because they're gonna, because like what what I was saying was they're gonna be like, well, what if it's not a stud and a and a feminine girl? What if it's two fems? You saying a fem can't raise a man? So that's why I want to say that. I just feel like there does need to be some type. Somebody does need to have. Never mind, because 
that's falling into the stigma of life. And I don't like that because I, I do hate that as well. I hate when you say women can't be tough. Because women can be tough. A woman can raise a boy and teach him how to change a tire. A woman can raise a boy and teach him how to change oil. You know what I'm saying? A woman can raise a boy and teach him how to play basketball. So I don't so I don't want to say there has to be like a masculine energy and a feminine energy, but I do still feel like that person there should be somebody in the house who knows how to even if it's the same sex or even if it's different sex, somebody in the house needs to know how to control or possess a feminine and masculine energy. Put it that way. If it's the same sex or different sex, somebody needs to understand masculine and feminine energy and not just say, you got to be like this or, oh, you can't be like that. You have to possess both. And I feel like me as a person, a balance, yes. I feel like me as a person, I possess masculine and feminine energy. So if I was to have a son and I had to raise him by myself, I know how to raise him and be like, well... <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I can teach him mentally wise masculine energy. I can teach him mentally wise masculine energy. I ain't gonna be able to teach him. About, I can teach you how to change a tire, change your oil. I don't know how to do all that. We gonna have to go somewhere and we can work on that together. <laughs> we can work on that together, but. I can't do all that, but um, I can teach you the masculine. I I can teach you masculine energy, how to defend for yourself, how to be independent. And women can be that way too, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I can teach you that, and I can teach you how to be sensitive to people's feelings and understanding, and you know, because women are nurturers, they're loving, they're caring. You know what I'm saying? I can teach you. Like I can do both, but I'm more so. I'm more so feminine energy. That is who I am. I'm a feminine energy type of person, but I have an aggressive side. But anyway, I just like, uh, I like the two-parent home thing, basically, is what I'm saying. I don't like when somebody's by themselves and they have to go from daddy house to mama house. It's just a lot. It's a lot. I feel like it's a lot. Like, when you, it's just a lot when you're going from house to house. I just feel like it's a lot on a kid. I don't know. And I feel like it's, people don't understand, kids are very... They're like sponges. They soak up so much. So what they see growing up is what they're thinking. They're building. It's like a, it's like you're programming something. You get what I'm saying? You're programming this, this machine that you have. And so if you're showing them that, okay, you're going to daddy, how's it going? They're like, it's just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, y'all. But I just feel like if they were raised in a house of just love, being, like I said, a man and a woman, two men, two women. If you were raised in a house of love, you're going to, it's different. It's just different. It's different to see a two people genuinely love each other. Oh, it's so different. It's just so different. You don't see them fussing. Oh, go to your daddy's house then. Or go to your mama house. It's just so different. I just love, I love love. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. <laughs> My mom, because I, I look at my parents and like I never saw them fuss. I never saw them um like I just always saw love. I just always saw love. And that's why I think I'd be so big on love. Like when I like she would always say, Call me when you get to where you're going, and he would call her, or he'll get up in the morning, kiss her. She would do her little thing. And it was just so beautiful. So that's why I'd be so hard on like my boyfriends and stuff because a lot of my boyfriends came from one parent homes or I never had nobody love me like this or why it's it, y'all it's just so different. Mm. Anyway, okay, on the Chris Brown thing, I really feel like um some people can be raised right and still won't act right. True. But I feel like that something True. True. Yeah. 
And I feel like that comes from that comes from friends too. But I feel like it, it, I feel like it was something they were probably lacking. I don't know. Mm. I feel like it was something they were probably lacking at home too. Because like, like I tell people, you don't believe that? Yeah, I feel like it was something that that was there was it was something lacking at home. Or something happened to make you... Like, with me. This is me. Um, My house was perfect, okay? It, it was good. It was great. Woo, woo, woo. And, um... But, even though I saw my... Oh, if my mom and them are watching, oh my God. They were... Somebody said, I disagree with that, friend. Yeah, I kind of disagree with it too. I feel like it was something lacking in the house. Because my parents were good. They loved each other. They never fussed. Woo, woo, woo. But in my house, we never ate at the family. As, at like We never ate at the table as a family. Never. I would get my food. I go in my room, my brother go in his room. Sometimes my mama and brother would sit at the table together. Like we together, like we ate wherever we want. Or we would eat in front of the TV. Or there was never a time where we sat down and ate together. Even my mama, like we she I kiss her and shit. That's mama. But it wasn't really like a lot of that. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm not really affectionate with people. Like, like I don't hold hands. I don't like all that kissing shit. I don't like PDA. I don't like none of that stuff. But my, my dad and mom were like that. But like, we weren't like that as a family. So now I'm kind of like, person could have been raised right. But let's say the daddy didn't have problems, okay? So let's say the boy might have had problems or he had anger issues, but they were just like, you know, they might have whooped him or whatever, boom, boom, boom. And they didn't understand communication and how to talk and woo, woo, woo. It's right. It just means you didn't learn how to talk and communicate at home. So now you're taking advice from people on the street and how they would handle shit. And now it's just like, oh, you right, you right about. But it just means you just didn't communicate and talk at home. So now you're just getting advice from other people on the street. Is that, I don't know, fuck it. <laughs> And that's not your that's not your parents' fault. It's just it's just what did they learn growing up? I, I know y'all are writing me. I'm so sorry, y'all. When I start talking, I just start talking so I can get sidetracked quick. Um, 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 um. So it's not your parents' fault. It could be because now what did they go through when they was growing up? So I could feel why we weren't so connected because when my dad was growing up. His daddy was an alcoholic. Well, he became an alcoholic when his daughter got hit by a car or whatever it was going to be. His dad was an alcoholic. I don't want to say his mama business, but his mama was grown. You know what I'm saying? And I think his mama had his her first child when she was 14. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? She had her first child at 14. She out there. So it's like, he went and moved with his grandmama. So he uh, he had to grow up quick. So it's like, he growing up, helping grandmama, doing this. So it's like, he ain't really learned affection, but he learned to love women. So like my daddy knew how to love women, treat women, respect women. He learned that from his grandmama, learned how to cook, but he never learned that like affection, that like, woo! So then that's why he ended up raising his children like that because he never really understand that like, cause like when, oh y'all, y'all making me talk. So my mom, she would always tell us like, Y'all daddy don't think, oh, I'm just talking. They probably cussing me out. She was like, your daddy think y'all don't love him like y'all love me. And it's not that. He just doesn't know how to, he doesn't know how to come and talk to you. Like he never whooped us. He never whooped us. We got our whoopings from my mama because my daddy just, he never got whoopings. He ne like his mama and his grandmama will tell you he never talked back. He was never a bad child. They never had to whoop him. I thought I could do that. Child. <laughs> I turned up and it, some, I guess it clicked in him. <laughs> I guess he saw me as a man that day. He like, nigga, you grown now. <laughs> Child, 
I said something and I stumped off. He was washing the dishes. I would never forget this day. I stumped off. Like I was just like, ugh. Like I stumped off. And I just like, whatever. I don't give a You know, just mumbling. Child, all I heard was like, I'm walking. I'm walking thinking that, you know, oh, it's over with. I said what I had to say. I said my piece. All I heard was this. you from elementary all the way up to high school I had never ever ever got a whooping from my daddy that one time and I think he just had enough like he just it was enough and sometimes people break and like he never it was always my mama who like if we um if we, you know, was bad in school, if you got bad on the bus, if you didn't come home when you were supposed to, she'll whoop you about that. It, it, it won't be long. It'd be like five hits with a bell and that's it. But what that taught me was, because I know a lot of people don't like whoopings. And um, what that taught me was get home because you don't want to get that whooping. It wasn't like I was scared of her. I was scared of the bell. I wasn't scared of my mama because I knew she I knew she wasn't going to beat me. But some days, um, some days you'll be like, man... I'm going to take those five licks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Child, I'm going to take those little five licks. I really got to go. <laughs> I'm going to a friend house today, but bitch, I'm going to take the licks when I get home. <laughs> but it's like you didn't want, it's like you didn't want to, but it's like, man, I'm going to take them licks because I really want to go to my friend house. Um, but it wasn't abuse. Like, I was not scared of her. Like, I was not scared of my mom. I was just scared of the whooping. That's all. Like, I didn't want to, I, I didn't want to get a little whooping. But, um, because a lot of people don't know, a lot of people don't, sometimes talking to people don't work. And talking to me wasn't going to work. Talking to me wasn't going to work. I'm too hard-headed. 
So talking to me wasn't going to work. That belt scared me, child. But talking to me like, now you know you shouldn't have did that. I'm like, okay, girl, I'm going to do it again tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to do Because if I'm already bucking on them five licks, then what the fuck you think? I'm going to give a damn about a talk. Don't, girl. Child, get out my face. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about no talk. You can take this phone. I don't give a fuck about that phone. I'm going to see my friend at school. Fuck that phone. Take that phone. <laughs> I can't watch TV. Fuck that TV. I'm going to watch it when you go to work. Because <laughs> you don't get to work. You don't get home by the time I get home out of school. So I'm going to watch that TV. Fuck that TV. <laughs> but yeah, child. But the one thing, the one thing that my mom said that she wanted us to do. Oh, y'all. What, what did she say? Oh, yeah, she said the one thing. I said, Mama, what's one thing that you wish you could take back that you allowed us to do? Because, like, now that I'm older, you know, you start talking to your parents more a little bit. Because, you know, when you're young, you think, oh, Mama, my enemy. I'm a daddy, my enemy. When really they're not your enemy. It's just they done already been where you've been. And so it's like at that age and time, you're still a child. So you're not understanding. But the older you get, even like with that mean auntie, there was one auntie. Ooh, RIP my auntie Ruth. I used to think she was just so nitpicky and eat all your food, eat your vegetables, do that. I'm like, oh, she used to get on my nerve. Like, is Auntie Ruth going to be there? I don't want to go. But the older you get, it's just like, oh, I appreciate that. But when you're young, you just don't pay it no attention because you're a child. And you're not, that's why you're, you're not supposed to get it, you know. But when you get older, you're going to get it. You're going to be like, this is why mama did that. Because especially when you start having kids of your own, you're going to be like, I see while mom and daddy was like this, I see why auntie was like that. You know what I'm saying? You gon' you gonna see. Right now you don't get it because you're a child and you listen to your friends and oh well my mama, my friend mama let him do this and they let them do that. And all my friends who my mamas and daddies let them do this and that are not where I am today. So I thank my mama and daddy for not letting me do what some of my friends did. Because child, they got into a whole lot of whole lot of when they got up with her. So yeah, child. Your mom and dad is not supposed to be your friend. They're supposed to be your parent. They're your parent before they're your friend. And a lot of people getting that mixed up. These younger fam these younger parents are being their children's friend and they're not being their parent. And that's gonna mess your child up because they don't feel that you're supposed to fear your parents. And when I say fear them, I don't mean being scared of them. I mean fearing the fact of disappointing them. And a lot of these kids nowadays don't fear disappointing their parents or making their parents upset or not, not finishing school with disappointing their parents. So it's like a lot of people fear their, they don't fear their parents anymore. And I feared that. I feared making my mom mad. I feared getting in trouble in school and she gonna be upset because I knew better. You know what I'm saying? That's what fear me. That's the same fear. Like when they say you're supposed to fear God, you're supposed to fear making God upset, disappointing him and stuff like that. Not scared fear. Anyway. No, it's a difference between respect too. It's a, it's a fear of being... Because fear and respect are two different things. And when, because like, fear, when you got somebody feared of something, you got control. And I feared making her upset. I did. I really did. Respect is just respect. Respect is just respect. That's just respect. Like, give me my respect. That's just that. But when you fear something, it's totally different. And I feared making her upset. I really did. That wasn't no respect. I don't know. That's. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. That's why you had the two different words. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's why they got two different words. Man. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Yes, the fear of letting them down. Yes, it's just, it's different. That's not a respect. It's the fear. Like, that is a fear. <laughs> but anyway, yes, so back to my mama. My mama was like, um... My mom was like, uh, I said, so mama, what's one thing that you wish you could take back that you did? She said, she said, giving y'all an opinion. <laughs> I said, I said, why? She said, because y'all talk too much. And she said she understands now why her dad growing up 
did not let them have opinions. And because uh, she said growing up, if her daddy said, this is this, it is what it is. He said, a child should not have an opinion. If I tell you this is this, this is this. And she said, I told myself when I grew up, I was going to let my children have their opinion and speak why. And she said, I wish I never did. <laughs> I said, I said, well, you did it. <laughs> no, because sometimes kids, when you let them have an opinion, they think they are right. And they really don't know because you are a child. Okay. You are a child. Uh, they said, I think a child should have an opinion. I'm telling you, we uh, uh we used to battle it down in that house because we had an opinion. No, no, because a child don't know what you know. So just tell them it's this, and then y'all can talk about it later. But in that moment, she would just let us have an opinion on why we thought we were not wrong, and no, 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 and this is that. When child, at the end of the day, I was wrong. Y'all are saying yes, but I'm telling you, at the end of the day, a child is not going to understand why they made that choice. They're not going to understand it. They're going to still think, well, mama, I did this because so and so, 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 so. And your mama like, well, no, baby, because this could have happened. And then now y'all fussing because the child think that what they said was right. And you saying what you said is right. And they all just are, friend. And that's what we did. We just are good. <laughs> are good. And then my sister, ooh, they used to battle it out. They used to battle it out. Kids aren't an equal. Exactly. And that's what she was trying to, and that's what my granddaddy was trying to let her know. Because once you let a kid have an opinion, thank you, friend. Once you let, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but once you let a child have an opinion about something, they're going to think they're equal to the mama and daddy. Because now they feel like, well, you just ain't listening to what I'm saying, so I don't care. And you're going to be like, well, I'm trying to tell you, baby. This is what. Well, okay, mama, whatever, whatever. Because I used to argue about my friends. Well, why don't you like my friend? My friend, my friend's right. My friend's this. And my, that's my friend. You don't understand. And then when I got older, my mama was right about my friends. She was right about my friends. They were no good. I should not have been around them people. I end up getting in trouble because of my friends. But because I was young... And I thought those was my friends. And I was battling out having my opinion about my friends with my mama. I just should have just shut the fuck up and listened. Could have kept me out of a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> but I thought I was right. I, those was my friends. And I knew my friends was right. You just don't understand my friends. And you don't hang out with me and my friends. And those are my friends. I don't know. I don't know. They can have an opinion all they want, but my opinion has the parent stands until you grow. So they might as well not even have one. It's not that you're not letting them speak. You can let your children speak, but it's just in the midst of the situation, what you say should be what is. And then if you come back after everything's died down, then you can go talk about it. But she would give us our opinion in the midst of it. And I feel that's what she means. I wish I didn't give y'all that that chance to have an opinion. I mean, and like, I guess, let me word everything out right. I'm guessing, and I mean, I got what she meant. I'm thinking she meant have an opinion in the midst of the argument. That's what I think she meant. But she's still, you know, going back and talking about it is okay. But in the midst of everything going on, the argument and why she said what she said, I think she wish she could have took that back, letting us go back and forth. Because she said her parents didn't allow them to talk back and forth in the midst of what's going on. It's just, I said this, this is what I said, then go to your room. We'll talk about it when later. <sighs> I don't know. And I agree because that it taught us like, I don't know. Everybody's different. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's different. Kids deserve an explanation for why they're wrong so they can understand. That's your parenting. But, I mean, that's your parenting. That's just respect. That's your parenting. But let me tell you something. 
when you get pulled over with that cop, he don't give a fuck. It's be quiet. <laughs> and I think my mama, I think it, I just sometimes I just think you don't understand stuff until it's put into life situations. I don't know, cause then sometimes. Because your mama done taught you to have an opinion. Because I used to do this too. Because my mama done taught me to have my opinion when I used to get pulled over. But cop, listen to me. I would, you, you start talking too much. And sometimes because you didn't have an opinion, you just start talking, 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 talking. And sometimes it's okay to just shut up. But when you start, it's just sometimes it's okay to shut up. <laughs> it's okay. But having that opinion... Now, when you get in life situations and arguments, you don't know when to be quiet. You just don't know when to be quiet because you never was taught to just be quiet. Be quiet. Just be quiet. And I had to teach myself because, you know, my mama gave me opinions and my voice, my opinion. I had to teach myself to be quiet. <coughs> that was one thing about me. I didn't know when to shut up. I didn't know when to shut up because my mama let me. Well, this is how I feel. I was speeding. You don't know what I... it could have been. I... Or just anything, even with teachers. I would go back and forth, back and forth because I did not know when to just be quiet. Because the teacher might have felt like I was distracting class, but I felt like I was whispering. I... It's just, it's, I don't know. So I was trying to, I was trying to give what I felt. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Sometimes it's okay to just be quiet. And then, that's what I'm saying. It's all about how you were raised. So then it's like how my mama wanted to do it like her daddy did. Be quiet in the midst of it. And then once it dies down, when the class is over, I would have talked like, okay, so just be quiet. Teacher's right. And then when we walk out of the class, then I could have went to teach and be like, well, you know what? I just want you to know what you said in that class kind of affected me. But this is why I did what I did. Because that's what I was trained Growing up, in the middle of it, the adult is right. Be quiet. But then after the fact, when it dies down, go talk to him. Be like, look, this is why I don't feel what you did was correct. Because this is why this is this and that. Boom, 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 boom. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. When you're quiet, there's no change. That's why I said, so you listen to only what you want to listen to. I said, then if your parents taught you in the midst of it, hush, just let the adults say they want to say. And then after that, you then go and say, this is why I didn't agree with what you said, because, because now you're not all just talking. Because when you mad, you're not listening. When they're mad, they're not listening. And at, at the end of the day, Respect your elders, even if they're not right. Because sometimes an elder can be wrong. But in the midst of it, it's just called respect. It's all it is. It's just respect because, you know, they don't earn their stripes. They grown, period. All grown folks ain't right. But after it all dies down, then you go and talk to them. Being a child, you say, I don't agree with how you did that. I mean, it sounds crazy now saying it because I... When my mom, oh my God, when I used to be so young in middle school, I used to just be like, well, mama, no, nah, they was talking. Like, I used to get so mad. She'd be like, Zoe, just relax. It's okay. Relax. Let them talk. This is that. And like, she used to always say that. And I'd be like, no, but I got to get my point across. And they was wrong. Then like, she used to hate when I would take over for her at school. Like, she, I used to, when people be like, you know, the mama jokes, I used to get so mad. With the mama jokes. And she'd be like, Zoe, I can't hear it. I don't care about it. So why are you getting in trouble at school? Because you taking up for me. Because they saying this. Or because the teacher said that. She, she, this is what her thing was with the teachers. If something's going on with the teachers. um, When something's going on with the teachers. Just be quiet. She said, then you come home. And you tell me. Because she said, well, if you are in the right, then I can defend you when I get there. Because she is the adult and I am the child. So she was like, if you're in the right, 
Let the teacher say what she said. See, at that time, I'm a child. I'm like, I ain't gonna let nobody talk to me no kind of way. I don't give a fuck if you was adult or whatever. You ain't gonna talk to me like that because my mama gave me opinion. And I'm like, now I'm do that one dude. But she was like, just come home and you tell me. And then you let me fix it. And that's what she wanted me to do. But because now I'm trying to be a child and I'm trying to fix it with the adult, then it ain't going to work. Now I done talk back. I done did this. I'm still going to get ISS because I done talk back. I done disrupted the class. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Then I'm going to go home and tell mama, oh, mama, this is what happened. Well, what did you do? I was trying to be in my case. And she's going to be like, well, Zoe, I told you to hush. Now you in trouble because you talking back, disrupting her class. So when I come in here, all I can say is, yes, ma'am, you're right. But my child was upset because of this. But she still can't get me out of ISS because I done cut the teacher out. I done said some shit. When I could have just been quiet, told my mama, she come to the school, she fix it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Somebody said he's still alive. Yeah, because we're having a good conversation. A lot of people nowadays don't know how to communicate. And that's why you left to go watch TV, smoke a little blunt, go call your boyfriend who probably cheating on you because y'all don't even know how to communicate. And therefore, y'all, that's why this world's the way it is because people don't know how to talk and hold conversations. We've been talking. I ain't asked y'all to say nothing. Talk to me. Help me speak. I've been talking. The whole conversation, just talking. Because I know how to talk to people. So, yeah, we still live for two hours talking. Yes. That's why I'm not in a relationship because people don't know how to talk. And I can't be with no boring person. If you boring and can't hold a conversation with me, I can't be with you. <laughs> if they don't want to listen, they'll leave. They'll go. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. They can leave. Same way you did. I don't have a gun in your head telling you to stay here and talk to me. Some of these celebrities should talk to y'all. Maybe y'all would treat them a little different. Some of y'all celebrities don't even know how to talk. That's why they hide. <laughs> because they're not who they really try to portray that they are. Some of these comedians, you think they're funny, but they're really not funny. They got ghostwriters and stuff. So then when you meet them in person, they're not who you thought they were. But when you meet me in person, I'm that same person. I'm just not all crazy and loud, but I'm still that same person. But some of these folks be so corny and so lame. You'd be like, how did you make it? <laughs> how did you make it? And they just be liars. You think they all nice and lovey-dovey, giving back to the community. Shout they doing that for taxes. <laughs> So gave a billion dollars for taxes. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you meet them, they so evil. Don't take pictures with you. Don't want to hug you. Don't want to talk to you. I mean, I understand you might be a germaphobe. I get it. Great. A germaphobe. But girl, if you touching a doorknob, <laughs> you in an elevator with a lot of people, oh, bitch, you got germs. <laughs> I'll give a damn how how many times you wipe down that airplane. If you're not in your own private jet, bitch, you dirty. <laughs> you are dirty, ma'am. I don't care if you wipe that seat down. I don't care if you got hand sanitizer. Bitch, you are on a public plane, sweetie. You're dirty. <laughs> Shut up. Don't talk about no germs to me. Go on somewhere. Do you eat pork? Do you eat chicken? Oh, you dirty. <laughs> Do you take your own place to these restaurants? Because if you don't, you dirty. So fucking shut the hell up with them germaphobe shit, girl. Hush. That's a mental thing. <laughs> You're never going to be 100% clean. That's why it's always 99% on this hand sanitizer. Because it's that 1% that they fucked up on. Mm-mm. Uh -huh. But anyway, girl, I don't know if you know. <laughs> I don't know if you know. Mm -hmm. But no, I actually am very timid in person. 
And that's just me. I get shy. Because, I, like I said, growing up, I didn't do all that affection stuff. So, when I see y'all in person, I just get real. I shut down. And that comes from how I was right. Like, how I was growing up. I just, I shut down. I get so, oh, girl, back up. Hold on. <laughs> Too close. Too close. Back up. And then, once we sit there and talk for a minute, it changes. It, like, you would see it. You would see the change. Like, it'll change. At the, from our first, girl, you drunk, but ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm not drunk. This is water. <laughs> I've been on this live drinking water. I ain't gonna do no liquor. Y'all told me my arthritis was kicking in. I ain't doing no damn liquor. This is water. Y'all, I've been right here doing this. <laughs> I've been refilling, baby. Uh-uh. Y'all said... Y'all said this is from lack of water. Uh-uh, my thumb, you must be new. My thumb been locking up. They said that's magnesium and um potassium and low water. I ain't doing no liquor. <laughs> this shit locked up for a whole minute. It said, <laughs> uh-uh, I ain't doing no liquor. Water. Uh-uh. I am not drunk. This is actually my personality. This is really me. Like, pe like, people be thinking I be drunk. I don't be drunk. This is just, I'm drunk off life. Yeah. I just know how to talk. Like, this is really my, this is really my personality when I'm around people I love and care about. And I love and care about y'all. But when I get in public, I just, I, I become reserved. And like, I don't know. I just get real quiet. I get real quiet. And then once I know you and I start feeling your energy, then that shit come out. That's why I have to drink. Take shots before I went on the wild and out stage or before I go to like a booking or something. I take shots because I haven't learned to just go on the stage and be me. Like I, that gives me my push to just be me. It gives me my push. Like it opens me up and then I can be like, ooh. And then when the liquor start wearing off, oh, bitch, I can open up now. I'm good. I don't know. I'm good. But, um, Y'all keep saying the Chris. Okay, I'm finna hurry and go. Um, the Chris situation. I just the reason I I just um I wish the girl the people who like give you false allegations, I wish they can get in trouble. And then my friend was like, Oh, they have um defamation of character, whatever, whatever. But I don't ever see nobody get that punishment. So what I feel is I wish whatever that person would have gotten like Chris. Let's say he didn't have those bit voice recordings or he didn't have the messages saved. Whatever he would <clears throat> whatever he would have gotten um in trouble for, I feel that's what that person should get. That should be your punishment. And that will stop people from lying on celebrities or anybody. That will stop people from lying. So whatever he was gonna get for like rape or whatever. That should be her punishment. If he was going to get 20 years or 15 years or 10 years, that should be her punishment. That's what I feel. And I promise you, it'll stop people from lying. Because now you're getting the charge that that person would have gotten. Because I feel the reason she did that was because Chris has been in the limelight about the Rihanna situation. That's why I tell people it's so big on forgiving people. It is so big on forgiving people because when you don't forgive people, you carry on shit that happened long time ago and people change. Chris was young when that happened with him and Rihanna. Was it right? No, it was horrible. It was disgusting. It was wrong. And there really isn't an excuse for it. It was fitting. But you never know what he was battling at that age. If he was on drugs, if he was drinking, if he had anger management problems. Because I think they said his dad used to beat his mama or something like that. Don't quote me. But um, it was just a lot. You know what I'm saying? And if Rihanna forgave him, I feel people should forgive him. But because everybody knows that people are holding that against him... It's easy to bring that up because people don't know how to let stuff go. And this man has not done that since then. You know what I'm saying? He hasn't been abusive. He hasn't like, does, does he have anger issues? 
Yeah, Chris got a little temper, but has he done that since then? You know what I'm saying? Has he done it since then? And I feel like if somebody hasn't had reoccurring issues of beating women or doing this, then you should let that go. Let it go. Even we deal with things with our... It's, and that's why I don't like people a lot because we like to... Scone, is that the word? Scone or whatever? <laughs> I don't know the word. We like to down talk people and their problems, but we really be going through that same shit in our lives. Like some people out here be having abusive boyfriends, but they want to talk about somebody else who done did something to somebody just because they're in the limelight. But you going through the same shit and you still with that person? I don't know. And I just feel like if he hasn't had reoccurring issues, then why are y'all holding that against him? And then they're like, um, and then people are saying he's a colorist. Why can't people, Skull, thank you. Why can't people have preferences, y'all? Why can't people have preferences? And it doesn't mean now if somebody says something rude like "ooh, dark skinned women are ugly," I've never heard. I've never heard Chris say dark skinned women are ugly, but people just have preferences. Like you may scorn, you may have, you may like dark skin, but doesn't mean you like you dislike light skin, but you prefer a dark skinned person or. I may just prefer a light-skinned person, but it doesn't mean I don't like dark-skinned people. Um, but I don't think... I've never heard him say dark-skinned women are ugly or light-skinned women look better than dark-skinned women. But if you got that video, then show it to me and shut me up. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I've never heard him say that but if you heard like a girl in a video say oh nah he don't want dark-skinned women in i think y'all talking about that time when they said he didn't want dark-skinned women in his section but did you hear that or did you just hear a dark-skinned girl who wanted to get in who they just probably thought was ugly or she's probably just doing too much nobody's ugly but he said no darkies did he say that did you hear him say that if you did, show me that video, and then I'd be like, well, Chris, that's fucked up. But that still doesn't say that he's a beater. So, anyway, um, I just if you got the video, please show it to me that he said no darkies in the section. Let me hear the video or whatever. But I don't remember that video. Um... And, oh, it's about to cut off again. This time it cut off, it's over with. But um, I just feel people need to let that go because that's when the now the media likes to all the media when he got in trouble, the media wants to put that out there. You know what I'm saying? They want to put it out there. Oh, Chris did this, he abused a girl, blah blah blah. But they never go back and apologize. And that's what I'm saying. Like, go back and the same way y'all was trying to to beat his ass about what the girl said, no one ever goes back and apologizes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sorry that we did this. And I was like, and why don't that person, like, if you're putting, and then my friend said, um, the reason don't put the girls who lie on the TV is because there are nobody. But you put killers on the TV. You put robbers on the TV. Those are people who aren't famous. So I feel people who lie and try to lie and get money out of folks, put them on TV too. Say, oh, this is the girl that lied. So now your face is fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Put them on TV. This was the liar who lied on Chris Brown. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Out that bitch. So now they feel stupid. They won't do it again. Oh, y'all be careful. Huh? That's the liar. Adam, she wrong too. She wrong. Put her on TV. Same way you do these robbers and these killers and these thieves. Put them lies on TV and put them in jail. Out them. But um, I'm going to go. But no, y'all, I don't. If you, A lot of people lie, y'all. A lot of people lie when you get mad at somebody. You'll be surprised how many people lie on celebrities because they're mad because they didn't get to be with them or whatever, whatever. And if that girl said he said blackie, I don't know. I go off of I want to hear it. I'm not going to go off your word because a lot of stuff happens behind scenes that you don't get to hear and see. Okay, I got to go. It's nine seconds. I love y'all. 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 And I got to go. Okay. Bye. We talked enough.